It's another day at work. Here I am, my dreams of university long past. That disastrous spell at the Sorbonne, full of fear and trepidation, waiting for someone to uncover me for the fraud I really was. My master's degree, <laughs> an unqualified success. And Florian, one more catastrophe in a long series of failed relationships. Another suitcase in another hole, I hum as I dry the glasses. As a student, I passed this bar at least once a week. I peered through the window a million times without ever quite making it in through the door, despite desperately wanting to. Back then, I was a wispy Paris bohemian with holes in my soles, reading about zinc bars in the library copy of Emile Zola's The Belly of Paris. But to my student eyes, the patrons here looked too frightening the proprietor too crotchety, the cigarette smoke too thick, and the housekeeping too skimpy for me ever to venture in there. Things change. Now I work here every day, up to my elbows in soapy water, drying glasses and inhaling the cigarette fumes and other stale aromas which fill the dusty air. In the mornings, before the bar opens, I clean out the few chambres louée which make up the second floor of the building. Bare walls, thin carpets and a million stories to tell. The bar is freestanding, horseshoe shaped and made of zinc. There are pulley lights with doily draped shades and makeshift cubby holes for stacking wine bottles. The walls are grimy and yellowed with crocheted curtains hanging on the smoky windows. Blackboards announcing the plat du jour hang behind the bar and the tables are covered with paper tablecloths over red and white checked cotton ones. Wine is served from indestructible Duralex tumblers of varying sizes. Regulars treat this place like home, coming and going, reading and gossiping, daydreaming and grumbling. The air hums with soccer chat. Around tea time, the crowd becomes more mixed. Young couples with babies and the local drunks. It's not quite the worst job I ever had, but it gets close. And each week I save a little to get me back home and put this nightmarish episode of my life behind me. This was an ordinary Monday afternoon. I looked up from drying the glasses to see a young couple lingering shyly at the bar, slight waifish figures silhouetted in the shaft of sunlight streaming in from the open door. They had an aura about them which made my heart stop for a moment. Or maybe I just think that now. Can I help you? We'd like a room until tomorrow. Well, this was an ordinary enough request. We dealt with furtive young lovers every day, but there was something different about these two. I showed them up to the bare little room, tucked away in the dark shadows, all the while noticing that they seemed to carry the sunshine with them, illuminating the shabby setting with an almost ethereal glow. Closing the door on them, I sank back down the stairs to resume my station behind the bar. What do I care about them anyway? Lovers come and go here, just as they do in my own life. Why did it have to be me who found them the next day? Still holding hands, still face to face, but all the sunshine drained from them along with their lives. Despite their apparent youth, they had planned it well and were quite without identification or possessions. Nobody claimed them as they lay cold in the anonymous Paris morgue. Of course, I had no connection to them, but I was there when they were laid to rest in the sunshine. And as the sad little ceremony ended, my mind wandered to the ribbon she wore and the look on his face. Why do I let this hurt me?
I must stop thinking about them. I have to earn money and save to get out of here. My eye catches the Chambre Louet sign. Crash! Another indestructible Duralex glass falls loudly to the floor and shatters in a million pieces. Merde! I say in my best French.